And D Gun, props, dude. You nailed it. Seth, you shall learn to trust me. I didn't doubt you. I wrote it down. <laughs> now, here's what I like about the All right, tell me what you like. Some gathering sources, but yeah. So it looks like it's going to be uh, Jordan Davis. Again, he's coming from a defense that dominated like – few others have in the history of college football and he was the guy the wrecking ball in the middle but Seth you pointed out earlier in the national championship game you wish you would have seen a little bit more from him uh in that game when he didn't exactly you know light the world on fire but certainly a guy who's a specimen he's a guy if you're if you're big on analytics that you love because he's big and fast and and fits a lot of those you know that criteria again 6'6 340 I can't remember an Eagles defensive lineman quite that size can you guys? No, no. I no. Mean, and there oh, it is. Yeah. It's there he is. It's official. It is. It is, it is official. There you go. Jordan Davis, the fans here like it. The fans seem to love it, and I do too. I'm so happy we yes. went defense. They love their defense. And I tell you what, he is a mammoth of a man. He is giant. Even compared to the other draft picks, potential draft picks, he just dwarfs them. D gun, props, dude. You nailed it. Seth, you shall learn to trust me. I didn't doubt you. I wrote it down. <laughs> now, here's what I like about the All pick. Right, tell me what you like. Because I, I, I still, I was hoping they would take N'Kobe Dean, but we know how they neglect linebackers in the first One round. of those linebackers is going to be okay. there at 18. There likely. you go. That's right. Here's what I like about this pick. He's still a little raw, but he can come in and learn from two quality D tackles, Fletcher Cox, and Javon Hargrave, and of course you have the kid Milton Williams yep. who played, you know, great the second played half of the well. season as well. well. So he has a he has a trio Woo. of guys who can he can help him make that transition, and a lot of the onus won't be put on him right. to be extremely productive right away. Od, the onus is going to be on him. Yes, it, it's like when when, when you're six six, three hundred forty one pounds. Yes. You, that's like the big dancing bear. You can't hide when you're on the dance floor dancing. Everybody sees. And true. when you trade up in the first round, <laughs> true. Yeah, he's not be sitting on the bench. He won't have to play every down like he would on some team. That's no, a no, good no. point. Because you got a hundred million dollars standing in front of him, and I think we all agree this is probably Fletcher Cox's last season. Yes. As a Philadelphia, we don't Eagles. know uh, Javon Hargrave so, how much longer he's going to be. Exactly. There. Let's let's talk about strategy and scheme for a minute. Feast, feast your eyes on this, okay? Just think about this. A true, a true 30, tech, 30 front. Yep. Okay? Yep. Javon, Davis at nose, Fletcher, Fletcher at the other three. Mm -hmm. Hassan Reddick at the weak side backer. Yep. And BG at the Brandon Graham side back. Backer. That's I, I'm Ooh. liking that front. I am liking that front. <laughs> Uh, that's that no. is a that's a nasty front, no. Mike. I love this pick. <laughs> <laughs> I love this pick. Hey, he he was the guy. He was the most I would say polarizing in, in a lot of ways. But you, when you think about it, the way Seth just laid it out, I love this pick. And all of a sudden, that rejuvenates Fletcher Cox a little bit. Well, I mean, it, it, you got to consider the Eagles play a lot of five man front. You've seen Jannard Avery that's on right. the field a lot. Yep. Hassan Reddick now steps into that spot. Not only can he rush the pass more efficiently than Javon Avery, but he can also drop in coverage. When you want to go zone and you got to drop one of those outside linebackers back, it's not going to be Brandon Graham. It's right. going to be yep. Hassan Reddick. Yep. And he's shown that he can actually do that. You can put him up on the line and shift from a five-man front to a four-man front and bring him like the Dallas Cowboys do with, with, um, with Micah Parsons. Yeah. It gives them a lot, a lot of options when you think about this pick and what it opens Jonathan up. Jonathan Gavin's got some toys. In the past, you've been playing an odd front with really a guy that's, that's a three technique, but now you've got a true, you've nose got guard. a true nose. Yeah. You got a guy who's truly, who can truly play the nose guard position, and then you have these other three techniques that can shade the guards. I love this pick it's, it's and not, what they're able to do with this pick. And quick, it's not going to stop them. From really running their 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 overs and their under, right? Because you can you 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 either run the over solid the BG side, right, or you running you know under solid with with the weak side back with Hassan Reddick up on the line, and you don't know. Okay, 
I mean, now, now you're designating, you're telling the offense, you're dictating to them, okay, yes. you can't run anything. You can't over run here. here. Yeah. To the underside or to right. the overside. Right. Everything you do has to be over here. Now we can drop safeties late in the box. Yeah. You know, yeah. now you know you can protect the linebackers. Mm -hmm. Now if the linebackers can just train their eyes to see what they see and believe what they see, <laughs> that's going to make a big difference as far as how you play the run as well. d -Gum, what's your sense here? My phone's going crazy. Uh -oh. People love this pick. Uh -oh. <laughs> Um, I, our I, 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 I our crowd agree. here loves it too. I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Um, you know how he how he says he wants to continue to build this team to retool this team through the youth program, and what better way to do it than with the draft capital that you have in this particular draft? Right. And let's face it, you know if 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 the Eagles organization is watching some of these better teams that continuously get into the playoffs, it starts with the defense, and you got a lot of high end money. Yep. That there you got to go. get rid of, yeah, because you have good draft capital mm -hmm. again in 2023 with the opportunity to enhance what you already have. You had a great draft last year. You got four players out of that draft we weren't expecting. Yeah. One of them had a bum knee, and we're like, "Why are you drafting a guy coming off an ACL tear who won't be ready? Couldn't practice in training camp. He started out on the right side. He struggled a little bit. Dickerson did. Once they moved him to the left side, it was a natural fit for him. Yep. He's going to be a stabilizing force on that left side for years to come, along with that young man named Jordan Malata. So the left side of your offensive line is taken care of for a few years. The right side is anchored by a pro bowler, okay? You're going to have to find another right tackle, but I, but you have one of the best offensive line coaches in all the game in Jeff Stoutland, and even with the line structure the way it is right now, I think that's the most solid unit on this team is that offensive line. Now, we got to get the quarterback up to speed, we got to get a little bit deeper at the running back position, a little bit better at the wide receiver position, okay? They still have the capital to do those things. I think they're going to take a running back in the mid to late rounds, which is not a bad move. Sure. Right. You know, because you don't know how long Miles Sanders is going to hold up. You know, they didn't even think about Boston Scott until the second half of the season out of necessity. And, you know, Gainwell is a, is a situational player. So you may find a diamond in a rough from the running back position. Yeah. But I like this because – this young man, as big as he is, as potentially talented as he could be, are going to be is going to be learning from two of the better interior linemen in the game today. We have another pick in, guys. No surprise. Kyle Hamilton, the safety, goes to Baltimore. So the Ravens take yep. Kyle Hamilton. And I agree with Seth. If, if Davis had been on the board, they would have taken Davis because Baltimore loves to build that defense yeah. from the inside out. I think it's one of the things Howie does best, reading the yeah. room. And I think he got a sense of where that was headed with Baltimore, and he hopped them. Well, right. listen, the Baltimore Ravens, you know, not long ago, late in the free agency process, re-signed Calais Campbell back. Right. Calais, yep. Calais Campbell's going into, I think, his 14th year. Right. They couldn't take the chance of not signing him back because he was out there and he knows the system. And he's a veteran. They could not take the chance of not getting him signed back mm -hmm. and then have what happened today happen to him. They don't get Jordan Davis or and they don't get Calais Campbell signed right. back. Right. So, I mean, you know, they sign him back. They get the safety. You know, I, I think it's a good move for them. Um, D Gun, I want to ask you, though, yeah. you talked about how solid we are on the offensive line. Do you feel that Nate Herbig is the long term answer at right guard? No. Okay. No. So yeah, that, yeah. That, that's, that's the only area that kind of concerns me a little bit. Yeah, but you know what? He's serviceable there for now. We, we, we don't need serviceable. Yeah, well, that's, that's, the, only, that's, the, only <laughs> we, we, that's the only stable spot you had on this team was the <laughs> offensive line. No, I get it. I get it. But, yeah. you know, what were the more pressing needs for this team? D, I get it. But, okay. my, but, but, but my thing is, yeah. okay, you got a young quarterback. Yes. And you got a bunch of young wide receivers. Yes. Okay. The one area that you can fortify, and I'm not saying that the Eagles necessarily have to spend a high draft pick on it. Right. I'm concerned about the right guard position. Sure. I, I'm, I, I really am. Because they are, you know, when the Eagles had their, their, their Super Bowl run in, in, in 17 and the subsequent years, the yes. one thing that they had yes. is they had a solid foundation on the offensive line. Yes. You know, and I just don't want to see there be a question there. You know, it, you, don't fortune, think, you don't think Andre Dillard could move into guard? You don't think much of Andre? I hope they move him he, off he the team. into guard? He doesn't feel like a guy who likes to move around <laughs> much, <laughs> Mike. I hope okay? they move him off the team. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. No, just for conversation. Yeah, he, he wasn't really in love with moving the other tackle they side. Move him. You want to exactly move the guard Rob. now? 
Exactly, exactly, Rob. They couldn't move him to the right side. Exactly. So obviously he got a he's got a problem with the opposite hand being down. You gonna put him inside? <laughs> yeah, Mike. With I, the opposite I, hand I, down. Wishful on, thinking, man. my man. I, I don't yeah, think that's that, that is Seth, a concern. I will say this, and, and I don't disagree with Houston you. Houston on the board, by the way. Okay, I don't disagree with on you. On the clock. But you're looking at an Eagles offensive line that was not a great pass-blocking offensive right. line. But what did they do? Nick Sirianni was smart enough to realize the strength was in a running game. And he dared teams to stop him, and nobody could stop him. Now I would imagine they're going to go into this season primarily being a running team first again. And as long as it works, there's nothing wrong with that. So that's why I said the offensive line, the way it's structured right now, is serviceable. You need to get better on defense. We all agree, coming on this show, they need to get better at defense. My friend, yes. I, I, I beg to differ because I don't think – I think this is the year that Jalen Hurts has to prove yes. that he's yes. the franchise guy. Yes. yes. He's going to be asked to throw the ball 30-plus times this year. I don't think he will. I think they have to. Why? If they they run the ball as effectively as they did last. 